Welcome to the first ever episode of the Dead Frog Lily podcast. Uh, this is going to be a weekly, hopefully, podcast hosted by your favourite people from Dead Frog Productions. I'm Adam. I'm Aaron. And I'm Aidan. And this week, we're going to be reviewing, covering, and speaking about everything Minions. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so first off, thoughts. Why don't we all just go around and describe this film in one word? So. One I would word. Say, yeah, one word, one word to encapsulate Minions the movie. I would say um, banana. <laughs> Annoying. <laughs> Aiden? <laughs> um, I'm not really sure. I mean, hmm, how would I describe it? I, I'd say maybe like extra. Extra, <laughs> extra. nice. So, so got banana, bit. annoying, and extra. So take from that what you will. <laughs> that does um, sound about right. <laughs> so Minions is the story of... It's sort of an origin story for the lovable little things you see in Despicable Me 1 through 8, or however many there are. Um, <laughs> so it's the Minions, Stuart, Kevin, and Bob, who are recruited by Scarlet Overkill, a supervillain who, alongside her inventor husband, Herb, hatches a plot to take over the world. It currently has a 6.4 out of 10 on IMDb and a 55% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's ridiculous. That's so high for this film, 6.4. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's a bit harsh. I think that's a bit harsh. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's an origin story that goes back uh, well before... The, I think this is set in 1968, which is something like 40 years... 30 years, I don't know, before, whenever the first Despicable Me came out. So, yeah, what what do we think? What was our overall sort of review so, of this? the very first note I've written down is that minions are the ultimate simps. All they want to do is... Yes, simps. All they want to do is serve and essentially be someone's little <laughs> slave. They are the ultimate simps throughout history, is what, I, <laughs> is what I've got from this film. They're... Okay. They're like a currency away from buying Belladelphine's bathwater. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what do you think about Minions, Aiden? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there were there were some moments that that made me chuckle a bit, and I mean, you know, it's it's it was fun, like for like a like a children's movie, um, but I mean. Yeah, I don't know, sometimes I tried to be a bit too logical thinking with it. Like, I don't know, again, it's not really great to try and put logic into a, a kid's movie where cartoon physics are a thing, but mm. yeah, it was it was definitely <laughs> something wild. Beedle, 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 beedle. Oh, you hear that sound? That's the minion fact alarm. Right? <laughs> Here's a fun minion fact for you. Uh... <laughs> Director Pierre Coffin voices all 899 minions that appear in the film. <laughs> what? There you go. There's a nice little fact. <laughs> so the director is heavily invested in this film. <laughs> See, this is there a minion hierarchy? Oh, oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Because for sure. they have like a therapist and a conductor minion, but like, who elected these people? Is this like communism incarnate? Like, well, what's if going we're, on? If we're talking about the main three, you got Kevin. <laughs> who is our headstrong protagonist who wants to go on the adventure. He's the oldest and the leader. And then you have uh, Bob, who is essentially a child. He has the thing David Bowie has with the, the different coloured eyes. Um, and he's this innocent little kid who's running around, getting lost, all that sort of crap. And you've got Stuart, who is the middle child. He's the dreamer. He is a rock star. He's, uh, he's sort of a little, like, trying to find his way in life, you know. He's just... A teenager, pretty much. He's in between the two. So Kevin 
leads the group. Kevin's the only one that can spell. He <laughs> writes the word Orlando. Um, <laughs> which did, is where this goes. <laughs> did we watch the same film? <laughs> yeah, we clearly had different experiences. <laughs> I quite enjoyed this. Just a preface for the audience. I've never seen anything Minions related <laughs> apart from the ride. So I've never seen Despicable Me. I've never seen... I don't know, all the little shorts that happen in Illumination films. I've never seen any of it, so this is my first exposure. <laughs> yeah, and I've seen the first two just Me films, and I've seen Minions before, and it's not better upon a second watching, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you seen any before, Aiden? Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen the first two. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a third. I think there is. I'm I have no idea. pretty sure. <laughs> I don't know, there might be, but... Yeah. Oh, well. But anyway, like I saw the first one just because I, I think we were just bored and we decided, yeah, <laughs> let's just go watch this at the cinema. Fuck it, I guess. And then the second one I went and saw with like my family and my little sister, um, just because she was getting into it. And then, uh, yeah, it was it was okay. Like I didn't not enjoy it. Like there were some mm-hmm. fun movies, um, especially because they slipped in like some of the bits of adult humor where you know all the adults in the audience can get it the kids just don't have a have a clue um but you can definitely tell the the rest of the time it was just 100 percent dedicated on trying to make the the kids laugh to be honest so <laughs> yeah 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 it's like essentially a slapstick film like it really harkens back to like 1930s Disney where there's like silent cartoons and it's just people running around slapping each other things falling on stuff because the minions are we'll get into this later but they're unkillable so they're falling off of buildings they're bumping into stuff getting hit by cars nothing nothing's gonna kill them they're like a little cartoon character um and they speak a language which is officially called minionese (laughs) which is a mix of nine different languages but is mostly Indonesian Fun fact for you there. <laughs> I don't know how to react to that. I don't know. I, I don't want to doubt you, but I don't believe you either. <laughs> These are facts. These are the facts straight from the mouth of the minion. <laughs> See, like, I have, I have, like, more questions for this one than anything. Like, mm-hmm. at the start, they kill what is, you know, shown to be Dracula, essentially. So, like, does the rest of the Universal Monsters exist in this world? Is there a minion out there who could meet the Wolfman? You know, also, Nixon exists in this minion universe, as was obviously later on the Queen and stuff. So, is there a minion who got drafted to Vietnam? Where's his story? I need... These are the questions I want answered. Yeah. (laughs) Where's the grizzled Vietnam veteran minion who was accepted (laughs) back by society, you know? (laughs) Full metal minion. (laughs) Hmm. Um, but no, there's two. I, I did find two bits I liked in this film. Mm-hmm. Two. The animation is actually solid. The scenery is all really, really is. nice. They are so good. Sadly, you know, I don't like the design of the minions because they're the most simplistic things ever. But this That's background the whole of scenery is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the other thing, sorry, is um, the organization of VillainCon because it's a pre social media world for an underground convention and it actually has good attendance. Amazing. The fucking mm. draft thing they must have done to get them leaflets out was insane. This film is a hell of a lot darker than I expected it to be. Is it? Like, <laughs> there's a whole sequence where they attempt to torture minions. Uh, and they're in this, like, Tower of London-esque place where it's, like, things that stretch you, things that cut you in half, you know, all the sort of medieval crap. And minions have just been tortured left and right. It doesn't kill them because it's a, fil- a kid's film, but, you know... Uh, it's just a little bit messed up. Yeah, it's the thought that's there, you know? <laughs> they intend to cause mass pain to these things. Yeah. Also, what's messed up is... Uh, I wrote this down. I was trying to count throughout the film. There is an unseen death count, death toll that the minions cause that is never addressed. <laughs> Go on. So, so there's... When... Um, which minion is it? I think it's Stuart. Gets turned into a giant minion. Um, he walks through London... And he's bashing into buildings. They demolish <laughs> buildings. They kick cars. They clearly step on people. That scene alone must have killed 
tens of thousands of people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then there's an armed robbery scene near the start yep. of the film. People With a villain there, family, yeah. Definite. You never see anyone die apart from that polar bear thing. So. No, there is, a, there is another bit. Uh, the, when they're at the villain con convention, there's the evil scientist who clones himself by travelling back in time. He actually, they kill the original and he just drops dead and then everyone disappears. So there is actually quite a lot of murder in this film for a kid's film. Yeah, because they, they <laughs> kill that scientific guy in such a brutal and yet yeah. subtle way of like, you know, they, they hit him in the back of the head with this contraption and it just... I don't know, it causes such a massive brain hemorrhage in his yeah. head that he just hmm. flops over <laughs> instantly and just dies. <laughs> like, for a kid's movie, it's just so brutal. Be-do, 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 be-do. Oh, you hear that alarm again? You know what that means? It's time <laughs> oh, for a fun minion fact. Uh... <laughs> so, the, the guitar solo that Stuart plays is Van Halen's Eruption, which was released in 1978. <laughs> Uh, but it was played by the Minion in 1968, implying that Van Halen stole his music from Minions. <laughs> oh, mate, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, yeah, n- another nice little fact for you. <laughs> See, I've got my favourite quote from this film as well. It's like kind of mm-hmm. related. I think, what's the main villain called? Sorry. Uh, Scarlet Overkill. Scarlet Overkill says that the minions are her knights in shining denim. And if that's not the most 80s <laughs> hair metal band that should have been, like, I don't know what is. I, I heard it, I was like, I've got to write that down. The knights in shining denim, come on. <laughs> they have two Even good the albums. I wrote down was, uh, someone calls the minions bold jaundiced children. <laughs> yes, I remember that bit. <laughs> yeah, that's the, uh, that's the Bank Thief family, isn't it, I think? Oh, it is, it is, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Such a weird film. (laughs) Mm. Did you uh, stay to the end and watch the post credit scene? No. (laughs) So the post credit scene is a music video featuring featuring the Minions playing The Beatles' Revolution. Oh my god. Uh, And it's pretty good. I'm not going to lie, it's pretty entertaining, you know? Uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan of uh, a big fan of the Beatles, a semi yeah. fan of the uh, minions, minions at this point. Now. <laughs> so now these things combined is it's pretty good. It's pretty funny. It's like it's like the new like Gen Z version of those Alvin and the Chipmunk covers you used to get. Oh, <laughs> I hated them as well. <laughs> oh no, I used to have those. <laughs> it was just like an acid trip, but without any of the fun for me. <laughs> how is it me well, I mean I came the up terrifying with the terrifying creatures that, like the minions themselves are meant to be representative of like well because they're in like igloos and they're in the frozen wastelands of wherever the fuck they are like are they meant to just be Inuits yeah like yeah. Inuit people <laughs> like it shows them later on afterwards when Kevin and Stuart and Bob <laughs> set out on a boat coming to America, so it's even more just representative of like native people. It's so weird. Oh god. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> it's interesting you say theory. I've got oh, one of my no. own. So, um, so my theory is that minions are a metaphor for God. Okay. Right. So, the. Invincible for a start. There is there seems to be no creation of minions. They just are. Like <laughs> there's no reproduction. There's they no just like are. they didn't evolve. They just are. They just exist. Uh, they're stronger than dinosaurs. They uh, they seem innocent, but they actually lead to the death of all of their bosses, True. Uh, including yeah. the dinosaurs, including Scarlet Overkill. All of those people will die because of their minions. Um, Minions are never hurt, even when they're, like, severely tortured. Uh, And minions, in the end, will be the downfall of civilization. (laughs) (laughs) Just as minions brought humans into the world, they will take them out. (laughs) What? So in the beginning, (laughs) there wasn't nothing, there was minions, and then the Big Bang happened. (laughs) Yeah. The Big Bang was a minion fart. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) I'm not editing that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now is it just me or like is the geography of this world a little bit messed up considering that 
you know, on the one scene you can see them jumping from Australia to India over like one little chasm. It's, I mean, I'm just confused how they could hop to India from Australia in the first place. Like, it's got to be messed up somehow. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, interesting you say that because you've just triggered the alarm again. Beedle, 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 beedle. <laughs> Here's a fun oh. minion fact for you. Depending on what country you're in, the minion's cross country trip changes. So, depending on what part of the world it's shown to you in, they travel across different continents, different places. So, we've got one version of it. Who knows what India got? Who knows what America got? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I mean, not only can they do all the previous things that you mentioned, Adam, uh, but mm-hmm. they just seem to be so immortal because, you know, they've lived for thousands and thousands of years. Like, they've gone through the whole evolutionary cycle up until modern day, and it's just insane. Like, yeah, they just seem to be eternal beings who, <laughs> I guess, just live to simp. <laughs> I told you, they're the ultimate simps. <laughs> Right, so let's sum this up. So, what were your overall thoughts and what would you give it out of five, Aiden? Hmm, I'd, I'd say, after watching it, I'd give it a, a solid, like, 3.5 out of five, you know? Huh, interesting. <laughs> Aaron's face is oh, no. good that. Go on, what do you think? <laughs> I'll give it, like, a 2 to a 2.5, and that's mainly for the fact that like, I'm not obviously the intended age range so i'm not gonna find it as you know interesting and stuff uh but the uh effect and animation look really good and there were some jokes in that that did make me laugh but it's, i never want to see it again mm. it's like two to two and a half i would uh i'm in strangely i'm in some sort of middle ground uh i think about a three because i think the film wasn't that good but the animation is really good and the minions characters themselves it's just a dynamite idea and they're like really funny and like the songs are good and it's like it's really good for children and then the adults would probably like it as well because it's just dumb fun so yeah solid three i would say three I can, out of five i can see why people like it yeah i uh, i don't understand why millennials hate it so much that i understand <laughs> yeah i'd say that's part of the reason why i sort of gave it a 3.5 out of 5 because i'm trying to give it like a rating that i think you know, from the perspective of a kid watching the movie, it is just a fun movie, and yeah, it's like aimed and geared towards children just trying to make them laugh, really, and have a good time. And obviously, you've got characters like the minions that just run off <laughs> the most insane cartoon logic and physics. It's it's unbelievable. Beedle, 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 beedle. And. That sound is the final <laughs> minion fact alarm. <laughs> uh, and the fun fact is, this is the first non-Disney or Pixar movie to take $1 billion in worldwide box office. This one made a billion? It made a billion. Oh my god. <laughs> That's ridiculous. And with that fun fact, we'll leave you there. So <laughs> thank you for listening to the first episode of our podcast. Uh, I've been Adam Harcourt. You can find me at, at WittyHandle on various platforms. I'm at Splash Webster on Twitter and on Instagram. Yep, and I'm uh, at PowerActiveX on Twitter and 2 on Instagram. Check out Dead Frog Productions on all social media and check out our website at deadfrogproductions.weebly.com. And also check out our Dead Frog Productions YouTube channel where you can find all of our horror short films. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.